I know you haven't had a chance to review this deal in any in a uh, great depth, but in general, what do you think it does, and do you think it's a good idea for the United States? Well, first, there's a lot of room for skepticism for a number of reasons. I'll just cite a couple of my own. Uh, some years ago, uh, in China, meeting with Chinese officials, I began to ask them about their views on climate change. And it became very clear to me from their response that the number one thing in their mind is keeping 25 million jobs a year uh, growing in their economy. And one of the Chinese officials used a phrase I found very interesting. He said, if we don't, the government will lose its reputation with the people. Uh, what they're concerned about, of course, is that if they do anything to constrain their economy, that the people, the 900 million people who live in very low economic standards in rural areas will all try to move to the cities and that they simply won't be able to deal with the social pressures that, divide, uh, that develops. The point is they're going to do nothing that would constrain their economy. On the other hand, at, at least initial indications are this could have a very significant impact uh, on the U.S. economy. So I think both of them got political messages out to a constituency they care about, but the likelihood is it will have a much bigger impact on our economy than it ever will theirs. And so I think that we're going to see substantial pushback, uh, both from business and politically, uh, and from, I, th I think, unions and others in this country who will view this as a potentially very difficult problem for the U.S. if we were to ever find ourselves in a position where anything could be enforced. Go Governor, being skeptical about the, about the Chinese as a partner in, in any agreement of this kind is, seems totally reasonable to me. On the other hand, um, I, you were, you were a, for a period of time where someone who was a supporter of cap and trade, um, on the, presumably on the basis of the notion that America had a, a problem with climate change and needed to do something to cut its carbon emissions. There are not very many Republicans like that anymore. Can you explain why it is that there are, uh, that why there are so few Republicans who uh, hold the kind of positions today that you used to hold uh, when you were head of the EPA and before that? Well, of course, that was a, a Bush administration position, a very Republican position at that point. And I think it has in some ways become politicized by the fact that a version of it was adopted by the Democrats. It was not the same, it was not based on the same uh, principles, but it had essentially the same name. And consequently, the term became a bit politically hot. But the reality is, anytime you're using a cap and trade system, you're using a market to solve a problem. So uh, we ought not to be have the illusion that one uh, program that's called cap and trade is the same as another that's called cap and trade. It's the, the devil's in the details. Governor, you, the reaction from Republicans on Capitol Hill today was pretty harsh about this deal, and I understand you're skeptical of it too. But are you comfortable with your party being sort of reflective, reflexively opposed to any, seemingly to almost any deal that involves an international agreement on, on dealing with global warming and climate change? Well, if you go back to the history of these deals and start with Kyoto and look at the, the nature of that, it was evident to me that this was not as much an environmental agreement, agreement as it was a trade negotiation, and it was a bad deal for the United States. And so it's just simply on the, in the context of the way America comes out on it, it was a bad deal, and it appears to me this is a bad deal. I mean, if just on the surface, uh, it looks they're going to allow theirs to no more than double, and we're going to cut ours by 20%. Now, uh, you know, I had another conversation with a Chinese government official once who basically said to me, look, you have an economy. We don't have an economy. We're going to build ours. We're going to do nothing that will constrain so, our capacity so the, to catch up with you. Sorry. So should the U.S. ever engage in climate talks with the Chinese if you believe they'll never, engage, they'll never come forward with sufficient changes? No, actually, there were a lot of climate change uh, discussions, even with the Bush administration with uh, China, to find ways that we could realistically bring down emissions and do it through logical, thoughtful ways. Now, as you know, in the United States, we're taking measures. We've begun to see our footprint uh, uh, diminish. That's not true in China. And I am sure when we get into the details of this agreement, we're going to find out that there are very few enforcement mechanisms. But here's the thing about the United States. We keep our commitments. If you look at the Kyoto, ag Kyoto Agreement and look at all of the signers, they didn't keep their commitment. Our country didn't sign it, and we've kept ours. 
So there, 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 there is a history to these agreements that caused me to believe they're not always just about the environment. They're often uh, about uh, economics and trade. Governor, let me come back to the political thrust of Mark's earlier question, which is, uh, the Republicans, are, 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 because of the harshness of their reaction to this, there is a general perception that the party is, is not favorable to or is not, it's an anti-environmental or certainly not a pro-environmental party. And you have the, in this next uh, incoming Senate, you're going to have Jim Inhofe from Oklahoma, who's a pretty outspoken climate change denier at the head of the Energy and Commerce Committee. I, it just seems to me that there's a political question here about whether the Republican Party is in a good or bad place when it's identified with uh, policies that many people see as being pretty much fundamentally opposed to where what the consensus is in the scientific community. I, I think this is a legitimate problem for our party and it isn't that our policies are wrong we just don't know how to talk about the environment or health care as well as we should and we need to learn as a party that this is a matter that is of concern to people we ought not to abandon our ideology uh, about moving to using markets as opposed to mandates we ought to recognize that that people want solutions but they 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 want they want them to be solutions that are rational we need to talk about it and we need to be in a position to be solving the problem but we don't need to necessarily buy into the big government top down uh, ideology of selling uh, uh, or, or selling our future t uh, in the in the context of just getting an agreement governor quick final answer on a different topic do you think your friend Mitt Romney should run for president in 2016 I wish he could. I wish he would. Uh, I don't think the chances are zero, but I don't think they're very high, and uh, so we'll all just uh, watch with interest.